Maurin wat er kunt doen voor. En daar was ook nog voet en nog wakker met geld. The land of some others I struck across the mountain water into China. I picked mushrooms in the hopes of settling in Shanghai. The I don't speak Chinese at all. But in the mountains I met a man. He said, I can sell those for you. And he didn't cheat me. He gave me all the money from the sale. At that time, I didn't know he was past the harm. Over the next two years, I went back several times. Each time, my pastor Han helped me. One day, I asked why he would do this, for he himself was in great danger for assisting a North Korea. It is because I am a Christian, he said. That made me afraid. Was he going to eat my liver? <laughs> One day, Pastor Han said to me, God is real. There is hope for every person. I could not believe he would say that word. God, nobody says that word. We know it is an act of treason. To speak the name of God can mean to soldiers coming in the night. I showed the Bible to my wife. At first, she refused to even look at it. Why would you bring that here? She cried. She knew that if anyone reported that you had even glanced at a Bible, you would be arrested, and not just you. You and all your relatives sent to the concentration camps for years and years and years. Over time, my wife too learned that God is real. She found hope. And then I shared the word of God with my best friend. It was very dangerous for me to share. It was very dangerous for him to listen. summer of 2016, we heard that some North Korean assassins were being honored by the government, rewarded for their good work for killing a terrorist missionary in Shanghai. We knew it was Pastor Han. Who else could it be? We were frightened. 
It's the law he was my friend. It's the law I have met with him many times. Pastor Han gave his life, but he gave hope to me and to many other North Koreans. And despite the ever present danger, many of us will continue to share the message that God is real. I hope that our sacrifice. When the day comes, it will be worthwhile, just like it was for Pastor Han. church we set our alarms for 10 40 in the morning and 10 40 at night to remind us of the 10 40 window an area of the world where those who have yet to hear the good news of jesus christ one time in a clear and a relevant way that gives them that opportunity to whether to accept him or to reject him that we pray during that time and uh and so this morning i want us to pray not only for this area of the window but i also want us to pray for uh, north korea specific and that we are Pressing in and seeing God and making transformation happen. Amen? Amen. How many know that God can transform regions of the world? How many know God can transform right here in our own backyard? How many know God can transform our own lives? Amen? Amen. And for us to be those ones that are stepping up to the plate and, and seeing that transformation happen. And uh, so on your on your uh, seats, there, there are these two things that are on your seat. One is the Voice of the Martyrs magazine. This gives you some more information in regards to the persecuted church around the globe. It gives you a, a way to be able to pray for the nations. It also gives you a way just to be informed. How many know it's important to be informed? Because yeah. otherwise we would just hear what the news spouts off to us in regards to these different regions of the world. But how many know there's so much more there? How many know there's so much more there? And there's these people. And uh, and, and when I think about uh, these people, I love what they're saying. And, you know, you know what what... You know, hopefully our life will, will count just as much as Pastor Han's life. Yeah. And when they say that Pastor Han discipled a thousand North Koreans, that's not just converting a thousand North Koreans to Jesus. That is a thousand people that he spent time with and he imparted with and he trained and he equipped. And there's a there's at least that many that are in North Korea today. How many think that it'd be awesome to see North Korea change from the inside out yeah. Yeah. and watch the people be raised up and, and to see that whole thing shifted yeah. because of the good news of Jesus Christ? How many know the good news of Jesus Christ is good news? Yeah. And how many know that that good news can change things? Yeah. And so that that when we pray and we agree with these ones that are there in these areas of the world, that we are participants in what's happening there. And so this morning, let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. I say thank you. Thank you for Pastor Han and his life and his family. And God, I just ask that grace and mercy to be over them. And God, that out of that, Lord, you said the boy, that, that, the, that the martyr's blood would cry out. And God, we just ask that it would cry out and it would be multiplied in China and in North Korea. And that God, that this would just be an explosive force that no military could shut down that no dictator can, can quiet or squelch. And that, God, that it will be raised up and there will be a people that will be raised up for your namesake. Give them boldness. Give them courage. And, God, we pray for a hedge protection by them and their households. Those that are in concentration camps even today, that, God, that you would just pour out your spirit upon them. Encourage them, God. And that, God, that you will feed them. And you, you will feed them spiritually, but, God, you will feed them uh, physically as well. And that, God, that you bring miracles. God, we just ask in the name of Jesus for miracles to happen in this area of the world. God, we pray for the 1040, God, every day of our weeks, God, that we just cry out, God, that you would that we would see a shift that would happen. And, Lord, I think about India and how that government is being so suppressive right now. And that government right now, God, I just pray that you will cause 
your people to raise up, be raised up. It'll cause your people to be filled with your power of your Holy Spirit. It'll cause your people to speak louder and boldly. And that God, you'll place a hedge of protection about them in Vijaya and Anand and India. And God, the children, the children's home. And God, you're going to raise up an army that would just be able to just be, that all this stuff is going to shift from the inside out. And that there would be a revival, an awakening that would happen that would transform whole communities and governments in Jesus' name. God, we are believing big with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. 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 So the stuff we've been talking about is being expectant. Go ahead and we're going to collect the offering. Those offering baskets can go ahead and be passed on down if they haven't been passed already. Um, in your money is that you, when you give to the Peel Church, and it goes towards things of, of reaching the nations of the world. It goes towards not only reaching the nations, but it goes right here in our own backyard as well. And I just want to let you know, go on to fuel.org, not fuelchurch.org, but fuel.org. You can see all the mission trips that are going to be going off this next year. We've got a medical trip in March, Peru. We've got a Puerto Rico in June. we got a, another Peru trip, college and young adult trip in June uh, to Peru. we got a Colorado trip that we do every year in July. Israel, we're going to be going to Israel in July. If you want to have an Israel experience that is unlike any other Israel experience, come with us. Um, our price point is a little bit higher than some of those that are out there, but that's because we have people that we are having come to speak to us. Like, for instance, the guy who was the journalist for Yasser Arafat, he was actually at Camp David with Bill Clinton and Yasser Arafat. He was in the internal meetings that happened there, and he's going to share with us his perspective on all those things. We got the guy who actually built, uh, negotiated all the land treaty between Israel and Palestine. He is actually going to be talking to us. He's going to be on our bus starter. The guy who actually wrote the um, the IDF manual, the Israel Defense Force manual, he's going to be with us. He's going to take us up on the Golan Heights area, and we're going to have an opportunity. So we're going to get a a spiritual religious experience as well as a political experience on it. We're going to be taking a jeep tour out to a kibbutz, and we're going to be uh, having a barbecue out there with the family, and so you'll be able to experience what a kibbutz life is like as well. As well as we go to places like the Garden Tomb and having communion there, we're going to be going on the Sea of Galilee and riding the boat on the Sea of Galilee. We're going to be going to the Dead Sea. We're going to be um, going to some places, going to uh, Shepherd's Field, which is the area in Bethlehem where uh, where Jesus, you know, an area where Jesus was born. And so we're going to be exploring all those sites along with the political sites. And so you, stuff you definitely do not want to miss. And so um, and so that's a great one. Then we also have Zambia. That's going to be coming up in August, and we're going to be taking a team to Zambia. Zambia, I say Zambia. Zambia. Um, going to be taking a team to Zambia, Pastor Randall, and uh, helping to build out a uh, children's home there, school, that kind of stuff. Uh, put a well in, um, and and uh, just really and doing some uh, medical uh, as well there in Zambia. And so that that's an awesome trip. You're saying, well, I don't know how to do this. Listen, all of our trips are for everybody. We'll always find a place and a position for you to get some talent that you have. Um, so um, please check that stuff out on the website um, at uh, fuel.org. So, um, well, I got to tell you, it's good to be back home. Uh, last week, Maria and I had a wonderful time in Arkansas, and uh, of all places, Arkansas. <laughs> How do you have a wonderful time in Arkansas? Well, you go to this church in Arkansas, and uh, Victory Church of Northwest Arkansas, and you can have a great time. And uh, so it was great because the pastor out there, this is where Maria and I, when we were in Arkansas, we served at the church there. They're the ones who sent us out and prayed over us to come here. And so we had an opportunity to go back and just thank them for what they've done and how they've been a part. The reason why we have sound equipment um, is because of that church in, uh, in Arkansas. And so we had an opportunity to go back and just thank them and, and share the good news and the testimony of what God's doing here at the church. Yay, right? Um, and so God's doing some great stuff here, so we had an opportunity to share about that. And just it was a powerful service, a powerful time with them, and just an impartation, and it was awesome. And then we were able to see the vision of what God's doing out there in Northwest Arkansas from a guy who had a small, little, tiny church that he met when he first got to Arkansas out of a broom closet that was his office. So now he has over 400 acres of land, plus he owns uh, 400 acres of land where he's building a retirement village for pastors, people that have been, how many know that a lot of pastors out there don't put in for retirement because they give their life away and they don't know what to do after that. So he's building a retirement village for them, which is really cool. And that's working ranch, so he has a hundred head of cattle and some of the horses and all sorts of cool stuff out there. And so we, and now they just built a facility and we're looking at the facility that they built out there on the ranch. We're like, hmm, 
So uh, we got some plans for that, and so we're looking at uh, um, doing something similar um, on our piece of land that we have out here. We start having a church out there. Amen. How many think that would be awesome? And so, uh, so we started putting together some things for that. So that's really cool. Which reminds me, coming up um, is our fuel uh, core meeting that's coming up. What is that again? The 19th, so it's coming up. So make sure you guys are here if you're part of the core team. We're going to be discussing some of those things about land building and all those kinds of things as well. But anyway, so we were out there, just had a blast. And so thank you for allowing us to be able to go out there. It was a great time. Thank you, Pastor Jim, for speaking and sharing the Word of God. It was great last week. Thank you for doing that. Um, I don't know about you, but Field Church is an amazing place to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's a great place to come, to learn, to grow, and to be a part. Amen. And, uh, and as we learn, grow, and that we're a part of this, I mean, we have some of the most amazing people in all the world right here at Fuel Church. Yeah. Look around you. Go ahead, look around you. No, you can, yeah, those are some amazing people that you're right next to right there. So, uh, so, so we, and, uh, and we, and we had this great Halloween night. I know that's a kind of a bad word to say in, uh, in church. Um, don't ever say Halloween, you know, people may come. Um, it's not how it works, but anyway, um, so, uh, we had a great Halloween outreach. We were at down at Limbaugh Park, over 800 to 1,000 people that came through. And, uh, and so we were, we were, and we were expressing Jesus in a real way. Did you assume we are as a church? This is, this is, we're just legit and lit, according to Brooke. Uh, so, um, but uh, so many of you guys, you, you, you bought and brought hot dogs and candy. We had some people set up for trunk or treat. We had people serving, people set up, people tear down. We had, um, we had grilled over four to 500 hot dogs. How I many know that's pretty awesome? And that's, I mean, there was a lot of grilling going on out there. So, um, and then uh, with every hot dog, that they were given, it was in a bag, so there was a track in there and information about Fuel Church, so that we were getting stuff out, letting people know, hey, we're wow. here. If you want to, if you want to be a part of something that's Wonderful. legit and lit, then come here. And then, um, <laughs> then we did ten gallons of hot chocolate that we yeah. served that night. Um, wow. So next year we're gonna have to expand. How many know we're gonna have to expand, right? How many know we grow in this yeah. stuff? So if you want, start prepping, start thinking. Okay, Halloween. Halloween happens on what day? The 31st. the 31st and so when halloween happens on the 31st i know you guys want to go out with your kids and stuff well come and just participate in any way that you can whether it's praying whether it's giving whether it's helping out whether it's coming for an hour or whatever these are the things that are exciting to be a part of and uh here at fuel church we we're glad that we're a church that does outreach yeah can I just say that? Yeah. We we are we 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 are unashamed that we do outreach and we are unashamed that we do missions. Yeah. I'm just I'm just yes. I'm just laying it out there. Because yes. I've been told from the very beginning, you know, when we started the church, listen, you you probably not gonna be able to do missions and, and plant the church at the same time. And I said, Well, hey, listen, missions <laughs> is in the Bible. And so we do like the Bible. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> So anyway, so uh, come on, and then uh, then Friday we had Fuel's first Fresh Fire Friday. Wow. Fuel Fresh Fire Friday. Anyway, we had that, and uh, that was on Friday night. So if you guys are hungry, thirsty, or maybe you just want to be hungry and thirsty, and you're, you're not hungry and thirsty, you're going, and you recognize that, how many know that's the first thing? Hey, man, I'm not really hungry and thirsty. That's okay. But let's let, let's just recognize and go, God, I want to be hungry and thirsty, and I want to fall more madly, deeply in love with you. And so when you want to do those kind of things, well, guess what? We have stuff that's available. So every first, first Friday of the month, we have Fuel Fresh Fire. And so um, come on out to that. So every so the first Friday of every month, we'll have that. And we're and the great thing is we're not part, we're not doing this alone. We're doing this with uh, Colorado Praise. And so they're believing God for a church in every county to be praying. And so therefore they're gonna, so that the whole state is covered and every county is covered in prayer um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How many think that's pretty cool? How many think our state needs it? How many think our governor needs it? Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's be praying for these people because they're all whack up there. And they, need, they need some Jesus. Um, so, so, so we need to get some prayer in there. And um, so, how many know we're blessed? Yes. Amen. And this is an awesome place to be. Yes. Yes. Turn to your neighbor. I, I know you guys hate this stuff, but that's okay. I don't care. Um, turn to your neighbor and say, We're blessed. We're blessed. You're in an awesome place. You're in an awesome place. So, when I talk about being blessed, how many know we've been talking about how many? 
we, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about the blessing of God. We're talking about being blessed, and then we're talking, and then when we're blessed, is, who's blessed? Those that are what? Hungry and thirsty. Those that are hungry and thirsty. Those that are desiring to fall more madly, deeply in love with God. I, those are the ones that are blessed. And I don't know about you, but I think it's okay to stand out. <laughs> so many people like, ah, church, you know, <laughs> you're kind of supposed to be quiet, pressed under and down, and come yeah. deep yeah. and forth. Oh. And I'm like, man, that's just not us, right? Why? It's just like I look at this this video. Man, they recognize the fact, right? They recognize that they have something to offer. They, they, he goes to his best friend, realizing that he might be able, might be thrown in jail. But the reality is, it's worth it because what we have is worth it. And, and here's the problem with most church. Most people in church don't believe that what they have is worth it. You know why? Because they haven't experienced him. And I'm here to challenge us to go, listen, let's experience God. If we're not experiencing God, don't get mad, frustrated, and irritated with God. Hello. Start, 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 start looking a little bit inward and go, why am I not experiencing God? Because God wants to show off. And he yeah. wants to show off through you. Yeah. And God wants to use you. God wants you to be able to be used on his behalf. Amen? Amen. So, turn with me to 1 Peter 2.9. This is an awesome verse. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. <laughs> some, some of us are like, man, I am just poor and pathetic. <laughs> well, that's right. Without Jesus, you are. But with Christ, you are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. God's special possession. How many of that's pretty awesome? God loves you. And he, he treasures you. And we ought to do the same with him. Amen? That you may declare his praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. I'm no longer in darkness. I don't have to live in sin anymore. I don't have to live in the bondages of the addictions that I used to be addicted to. Anybody? Amen. I mean, the reality is that we've been addicted to some stuff, and we need to get out of that addiction and turn to Jesus. Amen. And, it, and so we're called out of darkness into his wonderful life. But I love this. It says, you are a chosen people. One of the, one of the translations says, you are a peculiar people. Amen. I like that one. Yeah. Now, how many know it's good to be peculiar? Yeah. It was interesting being at the Halloween thing, right? And the, the different testimonies that we were getting from there, because people are like giving us a peculiar look. Because why are these peculiar people out here on this freezing, frigid, cold night giving free things away and having fun things for our kids? It was kind of peculiar to them. And they were like, they were like, so who who are you? I mean, that's pretty good. That's a great thing, right? When people are asking, who, who are you? And we're like, well, we're in field church. Really? And you're doing this? Hey, can I give you some money? No. This is, we just want to bless you. Wow. We just want to bless our community. And then one, one person said, oh, yeah, Field Church, you guys are always doing something for our community. Oh, I mean, that's awesome news. Yeah. Right yeah. This is an awesome place to be. Yes. I love this place. This place is awesome. <laughs> We're doing some cool stuff. God's doing some great stuff in and through us. And, and I tell you what, man, I just want to be those that are... <laughs> that are going after God with the whole our whole heart and not just partially and not just kind of like just stepping our toe in the water. Now, hey, listen, if you're here this morning, you're just kind of stepping your toe in the water, feel free, step your toe in the water. Just be careful because you might slip. <laughs> but that's okay because it's, it's good. It's a good ride and it's a lot of fun and uh, you can really get experience out. But I don't know about you, but how many of you have ever experienced in this in your own life, in your own situation, like, oh man, I just wish I knew which direction I'm supposed to go in. Anybody ever? Anybody ever been in a position where you're like, man, I don't know what decision I'm supposed to make with my family, with my business, with my work. Am I supposed to keep the job I got? Am I supposed to do something different? Anybody ever been in those quandaries ever before um, besides me? And, uh, you know, maybe something's going on in school. God, what do you want me to do? Maybe classes I'm supposed to take or not take. And, you know, what school I'm supposed to go to. I know for Marina, every year we would re-examine where our kids were at educationally. And every year we would pray, you know, God, are they in the place that they're supposed to be in? Are they supposed to be still continuing going to this school? We knew they were supposed to go there last year, but are they supposed to go there this year? I mean, you know, teachers change, all sorts of stuff change. So I'm just not going to assume that that's the right place for them to be. And so we've been from homeschooling to charter school to college, whatever, and we were always asking those questions with, uh, with our kid every with our kids every year. 
And so, I, and, how, and how many know it's important to ask those questions? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so many times through life, anybody ever walk through life and you assume through life? Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. And many times you assume, <laughs> and as you assume, how many know that's yeah, not a good thing to assume? Yeah. Uh-huh. Everybody knows what assume means, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have to describe it to you. No. Someone told me that it was a Democrat. But, oh. you know, <laughs> if you're a conservative Democrat, I love you. So here's the point. <laughs> if you're a pro-life Democrat, I got your back. Okay. Do um, oh, I need to so stop us? Is, is that is that we are here as as and we can't assume our way through life anymore. We can't put ourselves in that position because assuming our way through life gets us in a very difficult situation at times. If I assume my way through life and I don't ask questions along the way, how many know that I can get all sorts of trouble? Been there, too. And so I speak out of experience this morning. And so uh, let's turn, turn with me to John chapter 14, and we're going to read verses 12 through 17 and also verse 26. You can read all of it, but I just want to kind of get in, in these, this nugget piece in here. And kind of for us to kind of focus on a little bit this morning. And so starting with verse 12, it says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to the Father. How many of them, that's good news right there? Yeah. That the same works, right? That the same works that God has done, that, that Jesus did here on this earth, he wants to do in who? Me. In who? Us. Say me. me. He wants to do this in you. And not only the same works, but he wants to do what? Greater works. How many, how many know that's kind of difficult to go to the greater side? Yeah. And so, but then it says, you ask for anything in my name, I will do it. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes. He says it again. Yes. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now here's the thing. Ask for anything in what? His name. In his name. So the thing is, we have to understand that when I ask in his name, I'm asking according to what? His will. And so, how do I know what his will is in the middle of a situation? How many know that can get dicey? Right. And so, that's what I want to discuss this morning, because if I start learning to ask according to his will, in his name, I will get it. Right. Is there any if, and, or but in here? No. It's pretty clear. But the way we live our Christian life is as if, as if, is as if we don't get any of it. Or, where it's kind of like a crapshoot, Right. You're kind of throwing the dice down the table, hoping I get sevens or whatever, you know, sixes, I guess it was, right? And, and it's like, I'm hoping I'm going to get that. I'm hoping I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to win. And, and we're kind of throwing dice at, at this thing. And God's saying, man, I don't want you to throw dice at this anymore. I want you to know my will so you can pray my will. And when you pray my will, you can expect it to take place. That's what I want. Is that what you want? Yes. Yeah. How many of you know it would be good just to get what you asked for? Yeah. Instead of hoping that you get it. Right. You know, when I was used to cook at home when I was a youngster, and I was by myself at home, and uh, mom and dad would leave us at home by ourselves. I don't know why, but they did. <laughs> and um, and I would cook spaghetti. And and I, I learned how to test if spaghetti was ready or not. That Throw it on the wall. But guess what it leaves on the wall? Starch marks, right? And so and so it's like, have you been throwing spaghetti at the wall again, honey? It's like, it's, but it's there. Uh, so anyway, I don't Randall did it. Yeah, Randall did it. Yeah, Randall. Did it. Yeah, Randall. <laughs> and so anyway, I used to live with him, and I, I, I did the same thing at the house. Anyway, so the point is, I've learned how to test it differently now, okay? <laughs> it was wallpaper, yeah. So, so anyway, so, so here I was, you know. How many know that sometimes that's how we do God? We throw a prayer up to see if it's ready yet. I want to see if it's going to stick. I want to see if he's going to do something. How many know he doesn't want us to pray that way? Right. Yeah. And here's the other way he doesn't want us to pray. Whining and freaking yeah. complaining. Yeah. Right. He doesn't want us to pray that way either. How many are whiners and prayers? You don't have to admit it. Don't lift your hands. It's okay. <laughs> but so many of us whine when we pray. Oh, God. It's just not happening like I thought it was going to happen. I thought you were going to be there when you were supposed to. <laughs> That's not how we're supposed to pray. 
How about God? Thank you. And even in the middle of the situation that you make ways where there seems to be no way, that your word is true in my life. And when your word is true in my life, I'm going to come on the other side because your word says that I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. How many of you know that's a better way to pray? Yes. God, how many of you like whiners when they come in your house? <laughs> exactly. How many of you like, none of us like whiners when they come into our house, right? Man, if my kids walk into my house and they're just whining all the time, how many of you like just want to slap them inside their stinking head and go, stop! Quit the whining. What's the whining about? Listen, we don't raise whiners. And you're not a whiner. So stop whining. I want to whine out. Step in faith. When I step in faith, God can do amazing things. When I step in faith and go, God, I know you got this. I know you're making ways. God, I know you got provision. God, I'm, I'm, I'm here. How many know that things begin to break through on your behalf when you do it? That way? So it goes on to say, it says, if you love me, Verse 15, obey my commandments. Okay, here we go. People get so caught up in Old Testament, New Testament. Mm. How many know it's the Testament? So many people get caught up in, well, that was, that's the old stuff. And it's the law. Listen. I, 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 the reason why I hammed on this stuff is because I want to break this off of you. Yeah. The reason, hey, listen, the commandments are there for a reason, as an example for us to live by. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. Thou shalt not murder. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Yeah. I don't know why I can't live by that one. Yeah. Thou shalt not steal. I think that's a pretty good one. Yeah. I think I should live by. How many know that would saves me a lot? Yeah. I don't covet my neighbor's wife. How many think that's a good one? I think it's a great one. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that. But the point is, it's a good one. We need to be those. This stuff is good for us. So he says, if you love me, obey what? My commandments. And what was Jesus' commandment? You love one another. Some of us have a hard time with that one. Okay, I have a hard time with that one. Aww. How many know there's some people that aren't very lovable? Yeah. And they're very irritating. <laughs> and so I want to be in a place so that I can love even in the midst of that. Right. And that I don't judge them for what they're going through. How many know most yeah. people are just going through something? Right. Most people are just a mess, just like I was. Or like I ha- I have in my life. How many know we all have stuff right, yeah. and we all messes? Yeah. So if I can view it through that lens, that helps me to love even better. Right, right. right. Then he goes on to say, uh, verse 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. Verse 17 is what I want to get to. And that advocate that he says he's going to give to us is what? He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him how many know that's so true but you know him why listen to this very carefully how this is put here because he lives with you now and later will be in you okay this is where a lot of stuff in the body of christ it's kind of weird and here's, here's where it's at. When the Holy Spirit, when you say yes to Jesus, how many know you've got the Holy Spirit? Right. But how many know there's a different thing happening oh. when the Holy oh, Spirit right. comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit comes in you? How many know there's something different yes. that takes place? Yes. There's one thing to be saved, mm-hmm. and there's another thing to experience him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That experiential piece, there's a two separate occasions that are actually happening here. There's an occasion when I get saved and the Holy Spirit is with me. Then there's, then there's not after I get saved, then I have an opportunity to invite him in and go, come on in, fill me. I want to be full to overflowing measure. And it's in that instance stuff happens. That's when the gifts of the Spirit start to flow through you, right? 
And so if we can understand that there's these two incidences that are happening, and it's even discussed and even talked about right here. And as I take a look at this verse, it talks about that he says, I will give you another advocate. Well, I started looking up. How many know that we need him? Yes. How many know that we need him for strength? Yes. Yes. We need him for courage. We need him, we need him to yes. guide us. Yes. We need direction. I need the Holy Spirit in my life. Yes. Without the Holy Spirit, there's been so much denial of the Holy Spirit. People don't even like talking about the Holy Spirit. And even in, it's so wild, because when you take a look at the awakenings of the past, guess who was present at every one of them? The Holy Spirit. When I take a look at the miraculous and the things that have happened, guess who was present there? The Holy Spirit. And they talk about it. And these people talk about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit showed up. And the Holy Spirit did this and the Holy Spirit did that. And they talk about it. Yet it's one of the things that we've taken off the table as of late. All the way up through 1900s, there's all these there's all these things, 1900s, then you got the 1907 and 1914, and then you kind of jumped a little bit, and you got the 1950s and stuff, and up into the 70s, 80s, and there was this whole era of stuff that happened, there's a shifting that took place, there was healings that were happening, and then there was the whole faith movement that took place, and then people took that off on some tangent somewhere else and ran off with it because they were trying to make money on it, and how many know you can't do that with the Holy Spirit? Right. That stuff shuts down. And so then all of a sudden that stuff shut down. Churches began to shut down in regards to those things. And you start seeing less and less of the miraculous. You start seeing less. And all of a sudden what you start seeing in the churches is a babysitting thing happening. People just come into the church to be babysat. They don't really want to grow anymore. They just want to be entertained. How many know that's what a good babysitter does? Will entertain your children. They'll bring coloring books. They'll bring all sorts of stuff because they're there to help entertain your children until you get home. Right. And so how many know I'm done with babysitting? Yeah. I don't want to be babysat anymore. I want to come into the place where I want to walk with him. Yeah. I want to experience him. Yeah. Yeah. I, want to ex I want to not only walk in his presence, but I want to walk in his power. Yeah. Yeah. And as we begin to step out into some of these things, because that there's been this gap that has happened within the church, and I believe with all my heart, it's coming back, guys. It's coming back. And we're, and we're sensing it. And we're seeing it. There's places around that all there's pockets that are taking place, and you can read about them right now. And it's genuine. It's authentic stuff that's going on. When blind eyes are being opened, when people when lame are, are walking, literally, and they've got documentation of this stuff. I mean, medical documentation. Because I know that many of us go, yeah, well, how do you really know? Well, when the doctor said that this person didn't have a lung and now they do, how many know that that, 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 that counts for something? And many of us are trying to just disregard it and try to push it off. And I'm like, stop. Listen, let's welcome the miraculous. Because when the miraculous takes place, guess what? People are drawn to him. That's the ultimate goal. Salvation. He desires that none should perish. I want to see the salvation of our community. I want to see the salvation of our households. I want to see the prodigal return home. And how many know that's only going to take place with the miraculous? Yeah, right. Because I can discuss it to death. I'm a good debater. In fact, I like to debate. And when I debate, I, I can debate some stuff. And, and when, it, but how many know debate is not going to win the argument? Because they have a debate, but the miraculous will win it every time. Amen. I want to win the arguments with the miraculous. Oh, really? You, you got an issue with that? Oh, really? Okay, let's just pray. It's crazy stuff that's going on. I'm telling you. Stuff's happening. And you have an opportunity to be a part of it. But verse 26 says, six, six says this. 26 says this. When the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you. How many of some of us need some reminding? <laughs> and he will remind you. There's times I just need to like, remind me. Just like, where are my keys? Right? How I many know that it's so cool? God, God loves to be in the small stuff as much as the big stuff, guys. 
And so, and so he, he reminds us of things, and he will remind us and remind you of everything that I have told you. How many of that's important? When you're in the middle of a situation, there's times I need to be reminded. When I'm in the middle of a difficulty, there's times I need to be reminded. When, I, when, when, when things aren't going, necessarily going my way, there's times I need to be reminded because I can't remind myself. And so we need to be in a place in the position that we're going, Holy Spirit, I want you. I need you in my life. I want to be reminded of you. And I want him to teach you. So here's what I want to do. I want you to, I want you to take a look at this word for the Holy Spirit. Who is the old Holy Spirit? And that word that's been used a couple times in, that, in, the, in, in John there says it's the advocate. And I want to break this word down, the advocate. And I want to kind of dive into it just a little bit. Because I think it's important for us to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Because the Holy Spirit is not a scary creature. He's not the boogeyman. How many know there's a difference, right? Yeah. He, 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 the Holy Spirit is good and kind, of, but how do I know who he is? Well, because the scripture tells us who he is. And so once I understand who he is, then it's at that point I can say, man, I welcome you in my life. I want you a part of my life. I, I, I do. I want it. There was a time when I was at Bible study. I was in college, and there was a Bible study that was going on, and these people were all freaking weird because they were raising their hands and doing stuff like that, and I'm like, whatever. And um, I told you that story, right, where I was in that and where I was in in that meeting and God told me to raise his hands and I said no and he said yes and I said no and he said yes and we had this thing going back and forth and then finally the guy goes raise your hands and so I did this right and then the Lord said what's that he goes don't you know that's half mass you know what half mass represents death right and so I'm like, oh, right? And yeah, I said, and I lifted my hands all the way up. And then when I did, when I was obedient to do that, all of a sudden this thing came crashing down and with all this pride and arrogance and all this kind of stupid stuff. Like that. And all this stuff came down. And so I, I, and I continued to raise my hands right there. But it was at, at that Bible study that also they started talking about the Holy Spirit and his power. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know, and, I'm, and I said, here, here's my Bible. Show me in my Bible everything about the Holy Spirit. So they did. I said, well, here's the deal. I want everything that's in here. How about you? You want everything that's in the word for you? And so when we want everything that's in the word for us, then stuff begins to start happening around us. So so this word, this word advocate is this word paracletus, which means, uh, and, and, and also, you know who else was called the advocate or the paraclete? Jesus. Jesus was also called the paraclete. And so it's kind of interesting how, right? Because Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right? And so, and so the paraclete. And so this word paraclete was derived from this word called parahalo. P-A-R-A-K-A-L-O. Now, that's two words made into one. Kalo, K-A-L-O, means, like it's like it sounds, called. Kalo, you're called, okay? So this word to call or to be called, this word kalo and the word para, what's para mean? To come alongside of, right? How many in schools we have people that are called paras, and what do they do? They come alongside of people to help them in, 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 in they may be challenged at school, and so the para comes along to help them so that they're not so challenged. So this word means para to come alongside, so it means to, uh, called alongside. So the advocate, it means someone who is called alongside, okay? So he says, I'm gonna give you the Holy Spirit, someone who's gonna call, be called alongside you. Now listen to this, it's really interesting. This word paracletos, it's a legal advocate who makes the right judgment call because he's they're close enough to the situation. How many know there's times that we need somebody to work on our behalf? Someone, and it's also someone giving evidence to stand up in court. In other words, summon, called to one side, especially called to one's aid. So like even today, you have a lawyer, right? And what's a lawyer do? He is your what? Advocate. He is called alongside you to understand your story, to be able to tell it intelligently to the judge. Now, how this all started was back in Athens and in Rome, a, a man who was accused would bring to court someone along his side. He would bring a friend who would sit with him and speak for him or an advocate. So in other words, maybe that person didn't know how to share it, or maybe the situation that they, that they were in was, was, was really disturbing and they couldn't describe their story well. So a friend would come and describe the story for them, okay? Now listen, it's pretty interesting. He says, so that's what an advocate is. This developed into a system, into a system which skilled orators would hire out their services to friends who realized that they did not have their 
rhetorical skills to defend themselves act, act adequately. How many know that we have the Holy Spirit who will defend us adequately? I love that. There are times that stuff goes on, and I don't know how or what to do, but the Holy Spirit comes alongside to defend us. Revelations 12.10, here's a great example of this. Revelations 12.10, because you can see this whole courtroom setting happening in heaven, and you can see that, that you have you on one side of the bench, right? And then you have the enemy on the other side of the bench. And then the advocate comes, the Holy Spirit comes on your behalf. Your advocate, Jesus, comes and says, wait a minute, I spilt blood for you, for your behalf, so you could be cleansed from what? All what? Unrighteousness. And they now stand righteous with me. And then Revelation 12, 10 says this, Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens, It has come at last, salvation and power, and the kingdom of God, and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to the earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. Woo! We have an advocate that fights on our behalf, Jesus, the blood, right? And we have two advocates and the Holy Spirit who comes and stands in our defense so that when the accuser comes and says, yeah, but you remember that time. Yeah, but you remember, remember back when you tried that before and it didn't work out so well, did it? Anybody have that stuff coming in your brain? Yeah, you remember that time that you that you did, you reached out to God and he didn't show up? Do you remember that? Remember you were all alone? Nobody was there. I mean, nobody was there. Nobody, I mean, come on, nobody was really there. It was just you and you had your wall and all your stuff. Do you remember that? That's the accuser. And remember, you tried standing up, you tried to be more than a conqueror. You know, we talk about it in church all the time. And you were like a miserable failure. Remember that? Yeah. Remember how you failed? Remember how, the, how disgusting that was? You don't want to do that again. <clears throat> That's the accuser, guys. Right. But our advocate comes to what? Teach us and to what? Remind us of what Jesus has done. And this week, I don't know if you had rough weeks. Anybody had a rough week? I had a rough week. So anyway, in the rough week, when you have the rough week, there's two things that I can do, right? In the rough week, and I, I started doing the pity party thing first, right? Because that's just kind of my nature. My, my, my normal self comes out and wants to do the pity party thing. But then I, I said, no, I can't do that. And I had to turn. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of who he was. This Holy Spirit reminded me of who I am and what I'm supposed to do and the direction I'm supposed to go and go. And when I'm reminded of that, joy comes peace comes. All that stuff begins to come. But I have a choice to either believe what the liar has to say, or I have a choice to believe what the advocate has to say about me. I love all these definitions of the Holy Spirit. He's your advisor. He's your helper. In other words, he makes provisions um, for needs to be met. Right? That's what we saw that in verses 13 and 14 in John there. He's our intercessor, Romans 8, 26 and 27, which we'll read in just a minute. He's our counselor, Isaiah 11, 2. He's our comforter, John 14, 26. He's our guide, John 16, verses 13 through 14. I love this. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Guys, he wants to be your guide. But how many know it's difficult to be a guide to somebody who wants to take their own path? Amen. Amen. I mean, that's like light bulb city right there. Amen. So many of us are trying to take our own path and we're not willing to be guided. We're willing to go our own direction because I, 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 we, Marie and I, we would have college students come to our house all the time. And one of the things that we would hear about college, college students, they, they would say this, <laughs> and they, they were always like, hey, listen, I don't want you, I don't want to know your experiences. I want to make them all the mistakes on my own. And I would look at him and go, that is really stupid. I, I, I would just be blunt like that. And, and I'm like, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And in fact, I told my kids, I said, please, don't ever disrespect me that way. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what do you mean, Dad? I'm like, I mean, here's the deal. I want you to make mistakes, and I want you to make as many mistakes as you want to make, but just don't make the same ones I make. Mm-hmm. Honor yeah. me in this way. Don't yeah. make my mistakes. Learn from them and make your own. Make greater mistakes than I made. 
on top of my mistakes. Does that make sense? Yeah. On t- get on my shoulders. Let me, let me, let me, because that's how we grow from generation to generation. Yeah. Otherwise, we just be stupid generations. Right. But if I will learn from the prior generation, and they learn from the prior generation, they learn from the prior generation, how many know? This is how we get ourselves, this is how you set a legacy, guys. You want to know how to set a legacy? Change your generation. And teach them to change their generation. Don't don't allow them to live in your generation. Is this making sense? Here's the, this is how you do a legacy. I'm looking for legacy until Jesus returns. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for my kids to be me. I I hope my kids are not Maria and I. I want them to be greater than Maria and I. And I hope their kids aren't them, but I hope their kids are greater than them until Jesus returns. Because it's in that legacy happens. It's in that generations are shifted. It's in that communities are changed. It's in that that stuff. Because how many know that you may have to break stuff off of you and where you've come from? That's part of your legacy set. Some of you in this room have stuff that's on you that's from past generations that you're breaking off, but I sure hope you're not telling your gen- your kids that they're going to need to break the same things off. Because I already broke it off. Please don't go back to that junk. It's already broken off. Step on my shoulders and break off other stuff. Does that make sense? And we train our kids to go beyond us and who we are. So he's our intercessor, counselor, comforter, guide. He brings conviction. How many know we need conviction? Not condemnation. We need conviction. That's kind of a reminding thing. Right. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. It's after midnight. Don't turn that computer on. How many know that there's things that the Holy Spirit will come and bring conviction upon us? That's a good thing. He's our teacher, John 14, 26, 1 John 2, 27, 1 Corinthians 12, 10. And he gives us strength and power to do Acts 1, 8. How many know that the Holy Spirit comes to give us power to do? In Romans 8, 14, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. (laughs) Wait, okay, wait. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, anybody being led by the Spirit of God in this room today? For those of you that are led by the Spirit of God, you are sons of God. You walk in His inheritance? You walk in his grace, you walk in his power, you walk in his mercy, because when you're led by the Spirit of God, you are sons of God. Right. That's lame. No, no, no. You're sons of God. Amen. The creator of the universe, you know that guy? Yeah. Sun, moon, stars, all that kind of stuff that you can't even touch and reach. You know, you try to go intergalactic and do all that kind of stuff. It costs a lot of money to even reach there, but you haven't even re- really reached to the ends of that. That God... You're sons of that God. Sons and daughters. Here's the reality. You guys are sons and daughters of that God. King of kings, Lord of lords. Sons, daughters. You, 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 you're in his inheritance. You're in that family. You're in that pocket. That's a great place to be. So how do we do this? How do we leave? I'll end with this. Number one, we have to be dependent on him. In other words, we need to get into the word. And here's the deal. It's not just the word. It's not just reading the word. It's, it's doing the word. How many of you That's how you're led. By doing the word. Oh, that's what it said for me. Oh. That's me right there. That's awesome. Do the word. Okay? And then, number two, worship. How many know worship does something? Worship transforms you. Worship, if you will get in, some people are prideful in worship. Some people are prideful for what they can do in worship. Some people are prideful in worship because they're like, man, I don't need to do that. Shut my hands right here. I'm not walking. <laughs> and God's like, oh, stop. Remember, I'm king. I'm Lord. I'm creator of all things. I'm, I'm worthy to be worshipped. And if you will just lay down your pride, I'll show you some stuff. Remember that time, half mass, full force, right? Man, when I went that position, there's something to shift inside my heart. How many know some of us need a shift inside of our heart? Yeah. And God's going, hey, listen, I want you to worship me. Yeah. Just worship me. Who cares? Who cares what people think? Yeah. Now, I don't care what people think. 
I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not like always conscious about what I'm doing during worship, you know? Am I dancing? Am I, what am I doing? I don't know. I'm just worshiping, yeah. right? Yeah. So stop it. Quit, quit allowing that stuff to be present because there will be a shift that will take place in your heart if you will just worship with your whole heart. And then number, number three is communication. How do we communicate? You communicate, we call it prayer, but it's, it's communication, okay? So, so we need to communicate with them. And there's two ways that we can communicate with them. One is in my language in which I know. My English language. I know that language. I communicate with them in that language. I mean, that's a good way to communicate. God, I love you. Thanks for being here. I trust you with all my heart. So mind, body, and spirit. I, I, I quote scriptures. I mean, I, I dare you. Double dog dare you. Back. I, I dare you. Go into Psalms. And start going through the Psalms. And start putting the first person. Pretty cool. No, no, really. Try it. It's really cool. Some of you got to go. It's really cool. No, really. Just try it. It's, it's, like, it's like open it up and just start reading through it in first person. It's, it's awesome. It's like praying it over your life. It's really cool. Pray scriptures over your life, right? So that's one way to do it. But then in Romans 8, 26 and 27, it says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings. Groanings. What does groaning sound like? A groaning that cannot be expressed in words. How many know sometimes our expression of words in the English language it does not suffice for what needs to be spoken? I don't know what words. And so and then he says, and the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony, in what? Harmony, togetherness, in community with God's own will. Sometimes I don't know what to pray. Sometimes I'm in a funk. Sometimes I, I, I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'd be a whiner and complainer if I start praying my English language right now. And so you know what I do? I pray in this language of the Holy Spirit that he gives us. Paul talks about it in Corinthians, as tongues. And it's like, and I start praying in, in the Spirit. And as I start praying in the Spirit, I know it sounds funky to some people or whatever, but the reality is when I start praying in the Spirit, there's stuff that happens. There's stuff that breaks loose. There's stuff that goes on. There's times I'll be driving in my truck because I have to drive a lot of miles each day. And when I'm driving in my truck, there's just times that I'll just be praying in the Spirit because I don't know what else to say. I, I mean, my English words ran out long ago. And I begin to start, then all of a sudden I start, and then here's the next thing to the communication piece. How many know communication isn't just talking? You got to listen some. So sometimes the way, the best way I know how to, is, is I start praying in the spirit and it allows me to start hearing. And as I start hearing, and all of a sudden stuff will start dropping in me. Like I ran up against a glitch this week in something that I've been really, really wanting to make sure that there was no glitch in. Anybody ever been in a place like that? And so then I'm like, speak. What am I gonna do now? That was my only answer. And, and how many know those are kind of frustrating, depressive moments? discouraging moments and but you know what I, I chose to do I chose to pray in the spirit okay God you got a plan for this okay you you make ways when there seems to be no way there's there's something here I know you're gonna make this happen I know you're gonna make this happen. I know right and I began to start praying in the spirit and guess what God starts giving me some answers so it's that kind of stuff how many of you want some answers how many of you want to be led listen then here's what I'm gonna encourage you then let's be led I think you need to get to know the Holy Spirit I think all of us in this room, I'm putting myself in this boat as well, all of us in this room need to know the Holy Spirit better. Right? right? We know God. Everybody studied God for years. We know Jesus because we know everything that he's done for us. But how many know we need to do some studying up on the Holy Spirit too? And so we put it all together, God, Son, Holy Spirit, now we've got a complete package going on here. It's not just Word and it's just not Spirit, but it's Word and Spirit come together in a collision course, amazing things are happening when that when that takes place. So stand your feet with me. So here at Field Church, we're practicing being led. So that's why we got Fresh Fire Fridays, right? Because it gives us opportunity to practice some of that stuff. Also, we're practicing being led around this place as well. And, and we're doing something pretty amazing. Look around the room. Look around the room. Just look around the room, okay? It's a pretty full room today. So we're practicing being led. How many of you know sometimes being led can be scary? It can be scary. And so, you know, all I know is where we're supposed to go. 
All I know is what the Lord's spoken to us as a leadership team, what he's spoken to me in regards to what, what direction we're supposed to go. That's all I can tell you. All I can tell you is that I know that we're not supposed to maintain at the level that we're at today. Right. Spiritually, physically in this realm right here. And so we're stepping out. And I want you to step out with us. Can you step out with us? Yeah. Because as we're being led and we step out together, crazy things can happen. Yeah. And so as we're being led, we're being led starting next week, we're going to two services. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Isn't that great? Yeah. So we're going to two services next week. So we have a 915 service and an 1115 service, okay? okay? So it's not too far off. It's just in between the 10 thing, you know, so we went on either side of it. So 915 and 10 o'clock. So 915, we're going to have child, we're going to have uh, children's church and all that kind of stuff. Both services, we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have nursery at both services. So you, just so you know that, so you let people know. But 915 and 1115. Now, here's the deal. Some people are like, I had people come up to me and go, man, that is so great. Because I have had some people go, why are we going to do everything? <laughs> that's what's not all. <laughs> so, we're going, so we're going to, so we're going to two services. And as we go to two services, it's a cool thing is, now I had someone come to me and go, this is awesome. I just realized something. I could actually go to one and I could serve at one. This is amazing, right? And so it gives opportunity, and we're already seeing that. And people are people are actually stepping up to the plate and going, man, this is awesome. I get to do this, and I get to go over here, and I actually get to participate in the service as well, and all this kind of stuff. We have people around us that are so excited about doing this and going this direction. And, and so we're being led, and we're stepping out in faith. How many of this is Noah built a freaking boat in the middle of a drought when no one has ever seen rain, and no one even knew what a boat was. And they're going, what are you building? And it's a boat. What's a boat? It, well, it floats on water. There's no water, so float on you. Well, guess what? We're not like Noah, but I'm, I'm trying to do my best to be more like him. So we're stepping out, and we're building another boat. That's why we're doing two services, okay? But there's not to be, there will be. Okay? Why? Because we're planning on something. We're planning on a move of God. We're hearing from God. He's saying, there's going to be a move. There's going to be an awakening. And you guys are going to be a part of it. And so we're moving that direction. We're prepping. We're preparing for the awakening. We're preparing for a move of God. We're preparing for God to explode the house. And guess what? We might have to go to three services. Before we get, before we get our this next facility that we're working on, that God's opening doors for, and so we're we're just we're just gonna do, we're gonna do what He asks us to do. Because I hate these freaking pillars. These pillars. Anybody hate these things? Yeah. It's like, I hate those things, man. It's like. But anyway, point is, I like them because they hold the roof up. So, but we're going to a place with no pillars next time. Okay? But until then, we're going to love this place. Yes, and until then, we're going to do what God's asked us to do. And until then, we're just going to keep exploding and growing, exploding and growing, and seeing God do this. So here's the deal. Fuel Church is an awesome place to be. Yes, and you need to let someone know that Fuel Church is an awesome place. <laughs> because I'm telling you, stuff's happening here. Miracles are taking place here. Hey, that's great. <laughs> I love that. That's <laughs> So the point, right? I mean, come on. And it's let, let people know the goodness of God and the greatness of God and, and, and the love of God. Share the, your story of what God's doing in your life. And we had a miraculous story this morning. Frank was at uh, work, right? You were at work. He was at 7 Eleven this morning, and someone came in with a rifle, a shotgun, and pointed it at his face. Yeah. Guess what? Frank's here. <laughs> here. This is my point, guys. We walk in the favor of God. Crazy stuff happens. Like protection. Like favor. So, let's just walk in stuff. So, close your eyes. Father, come. Holy Spirit, just come. to know him. And I want us to explore
experience. And guys, there's just some really very real practical ways that this stuff can happen. And we're going to start doing it around this place. So, this morning, number one, if you do not know Jesus, or maybe you've known him and you've walked away from him, maybe you've been in a place in a position, man, it's like you've been discouraged, irritated, and frustrated with God. And you realize today that, man, that, that's a wrong position. I should not be in that position. Or maybe, and you're hearing the good news of Jesus in such a clear way to you this morning that you're like going, I want that. I want to walk with that. I want to do that. If there's anybody in the room here today, I want to invite you to come into this relationship with Jesus by his Holy Spirit. I want you to invite you to come to your Father, God. I want you to, I want to invite you to come into the good life into this blessed life. I want you to come into this and I want to invite you and then where, he, where the, the sin and the, and the addictions and the stuff that you haven't been able to shake, maybe your position this morning, like, man, I just haven't been able to shake that addiction. I haven't been able to shake that little thing that's been going on in my life. Man, that could be anything from an emotional thing that's going on in you, like eating disorders, that kind of stuff. It could be anything from depression. It could be stuff and you just keep going back and going back. It could be pornography. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. I don't know. Whatever it is for you, I, I'm just telling you, man, there's a good life outside of all of that. And I want to invite you to come to that. If you're here this morning, man, I'm not going to embarrass you. And I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm just going to ask you to do one simple thing. And if you're here this morning, you say, man, I want to know that Jesus. And I want to come into that good life. Can you do me a favor? And, I, and even as I lift my hand with, with you this morning, would you do me a favor and just lift your hand across this room? Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I say thank you. Thank you that for, for those, Father God, that, that are saying, man, I got to walk in this good life. I got to walk in this. And God, I choose you. Would you just let that come off your lips? Everybody around the room this morning, just say this. God, I choose you. God, I choose you. And I trust you. Please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And just, and God, I just, I, I invite you to come. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come into my life. There are some of you in this room, you've been struggling with being led. You've been struggling with decisions that are being happening today. You're struggling with with stuff that's going on around you and you're finding it difficult to hear God's voice. Maybe you've never really heard his voice. I mean, typically the way I hear his voice is through something that kind of goes down inside of me. There's a peace, there's a there's an unction of uh, some people call it that are inside of us, the inside voice, and it begins to start speaking. And maybe some of you are like, man, I just can't hear God's voice. I just haven't been able to hear and uh, things seem to be clogged up. And maybe this morning, even you're here going, man, Dan, I don't even know what you're talking about in regards to praying uh, in the spirit and, and but I want that and if you're here this morning you say man I want to I want to pray in the spirit I want to do that you do me a favor and lift up your hands across this room okay father you see these hands that are lifted up all across this room and I thank you that the Holy Spirit that you are gentle and you're peaceful and so right now in the name of Jesus God I just ask for the language of the Holy Spirit just to come in each one that you would fill them and fill them full right now in the name of Jesus we don't normally do this here at Field Church. We're just going to do something different. Uh, Maria, Randall, uh, John, Lynn, why don't you guys come up? Jim, come up. And, and here's what we're going to do. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have you guys, you guys come up here on the stage and kind of raise up. And then here's what we're going to do. We don't, we don't normally do this. But anyway, um, if you're, Kimberly, come on up. And so if you're, if you're saying, man, I want to be filled and I want to speak in the language of the Holy Spirit, would you do me a favor this morning? Just come up here. Just have an act of faith. Go, man, I want that. Just come on up here. We're going to lay hands on you. And because uh, that's what that's what the Bible talks about doing. So we're just going to do this. Come on up. Come on up. Wherever you're at. Come on up. If you want this, come on up. Just stand up here. Come on. We're going to get some good stuff going on this morning. Come on. Father, thank you. Come on. If you're, if you're wanting to get filled, come on up. Come on up. Come on over. Come on. Let's do this thing. Come on. Father, right now, we come before you right now.
funny, it made me feel kind of weird, it made me feel kind of funny, but that's okay, just jump on in, and I'm telling you, and all of a sudden you'll start to see, you can't get that sensing of what's going on inside you. Thank you, Father, right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
start doing some stuff. Now, here's the deal. Some of you may have spoken another language this morning. Some of you may have not. That's okay. Here's the deal. I want you to be expected. I want you to be expected. Not doubtful, not fearful, none of that kind of stuff. Be expected. Because here's what happens. There's times my dad, so my mom and dad, so they were separated at one point. My mom continued to go to church, and she tried to find a church that wasn't dead. So she went to an alive one. And this live one spoke, this live one talked about the Holy Spirit a lot. Well, my mom went to get prayed for and to be baptized and filled the Holy Spirit and speak with a new language. And so she got prayed for. And guess what happened? Nothing. So then my dad comes along and says, so he starts seeing a shift and a change in her life. How many know that's the evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit, right? It's the shift and the change that happens in their life. So then my uh, so then my dad starts seeing the shift and change in her life and says, well, I'll go with you to church. So he goes to church, and it's during that time that the guy called forth for people to say, hey, you want to get prayed for the baptism, filling the Holy Spirit, the teaching on it, whatever. And uh, my dad's like, yeah, whatever. He was the doubter, right? My mom was the believer, right? He goes down, the guy lays hands on him, he goes flat on his back, speaking in another tongue, and, he, and my mom's like, God, that ain't fair. And so it wasn't until later on, a couple months later, that my mom started speaking in, in tongues. So here's the point. Sometimes it'll happen. All of a sudden you'll be in the shower just worshiping. I don't know about you, but anyway. And be in the shower worshiping. And, uh, and, and and all of a sudden it'll come. Okay? So don't don't be fearful. Don't don't get frustrated at the, at the process. Okay? Just keep pressing in. Remember what we talked about at the very beginning, sir? Just keep pressing in. It's going to come. It's just a matter of when. It's, it's going to be there for you. Some of you today, you started speaking in another language. Here's my deal. Don't doubt it either, because that's the other thing that happened. Because I remember when I first started speaking in tongues, all of a sudden I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> really, is that something? And and, and, I, and I had a choice to make, right? How many know there's a lot of choices to make here in Christianity? So I had this choice to make. So I started making this choice. And so I, you know what my choice was? I'm going to say those couple syllables that came to me. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm just going to keep doing it. And then guess what happened? All of a sudden, the thing started growing. Yeah. And, and guess what? Stuff started happening. Power. Things, crazy stuff started happening around us. So here's my point. Don't get discouraged with the process. Okay? But just be diligent in the process and watch what God's going to do for you. Because And so if you got something today, I want to encourage you. Keep speaking in it. Don't stop. Don't let it stop. Because that's what the devil wants to do. The devil's going to try to come and try to get you discouraged and go, yeah, that was nothing. Okay? So I want to encourage you. It was something. Keep walking in it. Keep working in it. Amen? This is an amazing place. God's doing great stuff here. And I just want to encourage us, listen, let's let, let's get the word out about it. Let everybody know next week it's going to shift, right? So if you got people that you know that have been coming to church here that weren't here today or whatever, uh, make sure they understand. 9-15, 11-15, okay? And someone asked me the question, so what happens when, if God really starts moving in the house and all of a sudden things get crazy and we go over like we did today, what happens to that? And we just, we merge services. That's what happens. So we work with it, right? Because guess what we're not going to do? Uh, we're not going to be set to a program that we don't allow the Spirit of God to move. Amen? Yeah. So we're going to let the Spirit of God move. Amen. Have an amazing week. All right.